Georgia Brown Etude number two, part two. Uh, what I was just demonstrating there was kind of the concepts from that, from this particular etude, uh, which is really just targeting. There on that uh, intro demonstration, I was kind of expanding it to the whole uh, chord structure, just a triad. So this kind of ties in with my triad studies. Um, hopefully you've been brushing up on your chord shapes and just triads along the fretboard. So I'm going to just kind of demonstrate this concept because I think it's very, very important. You can take one lick or one, um, you know, motif, I'll say, and take it around through the whole chords and spend a lot of time on that alone and, you know, sound great, I think. Um, and it's fun. It's kind of a little game. So what I was doing there was on the E chord, the E7, the first chord, um, I was visualizing this, you know, or this, basically you want to be able to just, or this, <laughs> okay, I mean, I, I wasn't just restricting myself, um, I just kind of let it freely, so what I'm saying is, no, be able to just hit those notes of an E major triad, and this again is for an E7 chord, but all you're concerned about is just finding E, G sharp, B, E, G sharp, B, E, G sharp, B. It doesn't even have to be in order. You could be visualizing this chord shape. I've demonstrated this in my uh, a minor swing um, part two video. Uh, also in my caravan video where I'm just thinking of a chord shape and then... That's where I did switch into the A chord, the A7 chord. So this is where it becomes just a fun game to how long can I keep this motif going through the chord changes, of course. That's the game of it. So um, please refer back to my PDF on the various triad studies and or this one too if you need help knowing where E, A, D. such a great game, you can be pretty random about it. Um, again, the D one could be this shape. So this is where knowing your chord shapes, at least a few of them, this shape, that's for D, and of course this shape, right? Um, meaning this. And there I just connected it to the next position. See, it all sounds the same, and now I'm just thinking this shape. So you can kind of work one position at a time. Um, on my particular etudes, I don't, um, I haven't, you know, written them out in every single position. My goal is for you to understand the concept, learn and work on your different triad inversions, okay? That's the big word, is how do I know my D here? Do I know my D here? Do I know my D here? That alone can take you through you know the whole song many times and start to be very very free as you start to connect it. Um, I do want to talk about the motif that I'm using this half step above and below triad embellishment. And that's the whole idea for A2 number two is just hey I'm playing off uh, in this case the root of E. That was one measure. It's a triplet slur one measure. So it's triplet, two and three and four and. And hopefully you're working on that A2 number two. You can download the PDF from my Patreon site. Um, in this case, 
what I was demonstrating, what I think is a great study, I'm just going to do this separately. I'll probably have this on my other etudes as well, but it's just going through those chord shapes. <laughs> I was connecting um, the last one it just well, I don't know if it was just luck or if I've done it many times to where it um, the root of it connects to the cycle of fourth so E goes to A A goes to D D goes to G okay so that's nice to put on the fourth measure of each system there that connects you from E to A a to D, D to G, it's great to know that cycle of fourths, rhythm changes. I call that the ending lick for minor swing, one. But I love to use that as a connector lick, and you'll hear that quite often, that pulls you into that next chord as long as you're going through the cycle, I meaning E, A, D, G. Okay, even the B7 to E minor, meaning this. And it can take you, you know, of course, to the G. Um, so the motif again, going back to that, that's it. It's just a half step above, half step below. And notice my fingering. it back to the E, but uh, the, the motif again is half step above, half step below on every triad note for the dominant chord. That gives it a very gypsy jazz flavor. Uh, it's not modal, it's just, um, it's very kind of slippery, circusy. it's just a very fun, playful sound, and a little bit dark too. Um, on the G major, I did not do that though, I went actually um, chord scale tone above, I'm on G right here. I'm just showing you a G triad. I'm going scale tone above, back to the root in this case, slide, half step below, and then root. Scale tone above, root, scale or chord tone, and then back down. So it's the same kind of uh, motif rhythmically and, and phrasing wise. Off the third, it is half step above, half step below. Okay. Off the fifth, it's a whole step above. So the formula on a major, it's whole step above, half step below. And again, you can do a lot of stuff with that, but with this particular lick that I'm doing, that was one measure. So that's a root. Off the third, half step above, half step below. Off the fifth, whole step above, whole step, half step below, just like the root. So again, please see my triad inversion sheet or my triad embellishment, um, number one, that uh, I'm kind of uh, in the future because I haven't released that one yet, but I promise I will. A lot of my students, private students, already have that sheet, triad embellishments number one, so that's why I'm kind of mentioning that. But here's that G shape. <laughs> So again, I'm just playing around G, 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 G. You know, just connecting and notice that little ending like one. But I did it like this. Um, so I still got that embellishment slur in there. So I might even do that even if I don't notate that. I'm still kind of doing that little slurring, that triplet slur that I like to do. Uh, that's very Django, very Django inspired. 
Um, so I'm just kind of giving you the ideas of what I'm thinking here and what I think are some really fun practice things to do. Uh, I might just put that on and, and play along with this play along really quickly here just to kind of give you a, a quick demo again. E, A, all half steps below D and above. stop on the on the B section on the E minor but I just wanted to give you a demonstration of how it's just kind of free and fun to do that so it's a really good exercise um, and again these are part of the things that I'm throwing in into my etudes if you're just to have better control over that okay so that's I wanted to get that out there on what the concept is what the you know the motif is um, we have that half step half I mean the chord tone scale tone above and the slur triplet slur with the lower neighbor tone, um, we have that little ending lick, one. But again, sometimes I like to slur that. Um, the other aspect that you can't ignore in gypsy jazz is probably one of the most popular things to do, of course, is the diminished run. So if you don't already know this, I'm just going to demonstrate really quickly here uh, on G sharp. I do hope you already know that I'll have a very separate uh, special lesson available just working on diminished seven arpeggios. But I am tying that into my etude here that I'm writing out. Uh, at least it's in the B section on the second half of the song. So it goes something like this. So that was uh, into that second page here, stopping on the B7 chord, where it then goes into that E minor. Um, so I'll break that down for you in a second. I just wanted to go over this G sharp diminished 7. And now it's for the E7 chord. We're superimposing a G sharp dim, which gives us that E7 flat and nine flavor, nice, nice dark flavor. So I'm, you can hit the E7 just to practice it and go. Almost like you're gonna do the A train ending. But run the diminished from there. And again, I'm gonna have separate uh, Gypsy Jazz boot camp exercises specifically just to help us get that popular sound, a diagonal uh, run of a diminished 7 arpeggio over dominant chords. Um, so that is being used here in case you're wondering how I tied that in. Again, you know, we want to start to get away from just sounding like what I was demonstrating earlier, just only doing that one idea. It's nice to have just a few different ideas being used and played around with. Uh, not too many ideas, but just a few. Okay, then on measure 25, um, looking at my etude here, um, on the E minor, I'm doing the very, very popular lower neighbor tone. These are called approach notes. Uh, this Here's the E minor, and here's the lick. And yeah, we could take that all the way through E minor. It's a very nice sound. You know, we want to be able to do that everywhere. So again, I'm trying to throw in these licks that I'm hoping that are already pretty common in your vocabulary um, into the etudes, just, just to kind of tie it all together. So here's that E minor. This is that ending lick. Um, for the G7, for that walk down, it's really a very simple concept. This is again a continuation of targeting the roots. Okay, 
okay? And then we're on the E flat there, I went uh, to a different motif. Um, and then the ending lick, one. So let's go ahead and actually play through this etude at a slow tempo. Here we go. Thank you. 